G'day, this is Lucia. Welcome to my art channel. In today's video, I'm wanting to use the canvas that I did last week with the balloon dip on a budget. Where it didn't really work out the way I wanted it to, so I'm using it as a background, as I did with these tiles. Now, these tiles were also balloon dipped in the same manner, in the same colours. As you can see, that's what I've done to embellish those. This one is my favourite. I really like the way that one turned out. This one, not so much, but um, you can't win them all, can you? Anyway, so I'm going to do the same thing with the cam. Okay, my camera switched off, so I'm not sure where, what you heard and what you didn't hear, but just to repeat this bit, this is the piece that I did last week, and what I've done is I've added two stencils, I've used Posca pen to do the leaves, and then what I'm going to do, oh, if I can get it open, is use the Holcroft Gel Medium Gloss to go over the stencils uh, with no colour, just the actual, just the actual gloss, because I want the colour from the canvas to come through. I'm very clean. Do I have another one? Yeah, I do. That one's a better one. All right, I'll use that now. Uh, this will give it a little bit of oops, thickness. I should have gone from the center out, and I always forget to do that. And then once this dries, I'll come back and see what I want to do with the rest of the canvas. But right now, I'm only going to do this, <coughs> excuse me, the stencils. And it's just the gloss, which will dry clear so that we can see the underneath. And give it a bit of texture and a bit of height from the rest of the canvas. And if I go, I want to make sure Nice and nice and smooth, and I don't have any hiccups like I did last time. Because this one I'm not going to want to redo. Oops, that's a little too thick. Hmm, doesn't want to do that one. It's probably because that's a loop. Yes, that's why. Smooth it out with the big one. Interesting where the colour is, where the Posca pens are. It's as if it doesn't want to, maybe because it's a slightly raised surface.
still recording? Yes, we are. That's good. I don't know what happened the first time. Okay. That's looking good. That one is. That's not too bad. No ripples in that. No. Good. Alrighty. So that one's done. Yeah, I'm just going to put that in between some serviettes. Some wet serviettes. If I can uh, pull that off. Probably should have made some uh, room. Do the next one. Oh, that one's not so good. Bummer. It's a bit ripply. I wonder if I give it another before I take it off. I'll give it another smooth bit over the bits there. Quickly rub that off there. better. It's still not perfect, but better. All right. The rest of it's okay. It's just where the leaves are that it's a little bit, just a little bit there. Anyway, we'll leave it. We'll see how it goes. It's a little bit thicker now than the other one because I gave it an extra coating. And you can tell that it's a little bit thicker than this one, but Anyway, we'll see how it goes when it dries. And like I said, it should dry clear, so the colours underneath should come up. And then once that's done, I'll come back and decide what I'm going to do with the rest of it, whether I Posca pen the uh, flowers like I did with the other one. Probably. We'll see. Wet that first. I'm cleaning it anyway. I'm going to clean that now anyway. All right. So, yeah, it'll probably take a couple of days to dry. 
I'll be back again in a few days and we'll see how she's dried. I'll bring you down to give you a close-up of what I've done and then like I said I'll decide what I'm going to do whether I posca pen the the rest of it. I did want to leave it with the light colours but without adding the black but I'm not sure whether I can do that. We'll see. Anyway I'll be back. Okay, that's a close-up of what I've done with the gel. So, as I said, that will dry clear and the colours from underneath will come through. I'm just a little concerned about that leaf there that has a little glitch on it. And there's a little bit of a line going through that, so I'm hoping that that doesn't give it a bit of a ripple effect. See there and there. Uh, hopefully when it dries it won't look so bad usually when there's color it you can see it more but when it's clear you won't notice that as much with a little bit of luck all right well that's it and we'll see what it looks like when I'm finished when it dries and we'll go on to step two Okay, and we're back. Now, um, what I forgot to do <laughs> was outline the part where the gel was going to be to begin with. So now it's a little bit harder for me to see. I've got to really be extra careful while, when I'm outlining the gel, which is not a big deal, but <laughs> it would have made life a lot easier if I'd left it outlined to begin with, same as the leaves. Anyway, I've started, made a start of what I'm going to do. So I'm going to outline the, the gel part and leave it blank, uh, sorry, leave it clear in the centre so that the colours underneath will come through. And I've gone ahead and started to make my own flowers from the little bits and pieces. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to show you the whole lot because it's going to take hours to do this and for the sake of the video, I am not going to do the whole video, uh, sorry, the whole pa uh, painting on the video. So I'll just do one more flower and finish outlining this one on camera uh, just to give you an idea of how I do it because I know that there's quite a few people out there that have asked me how I embellish my artwork and this is how I basically do it. I don't always use the gel gloss. Sometimes I just draw on the actual painting itself and then embellish to suit myself. Here, yeah, so that's it. So while there's not many people out there that do show their embellishments that I'm aware of, one artist that I am highly influenced by is uh, Bubbles or Kayleen Simmons from Venom Fluid Art. And while she doesn't show her embellishments on video, she does have quite a lot that she does, and she does show them on her um, on pouring with Venom Fluid Art. So if you want to check them out, go ahead and check them out. She's really, really good, and she's certainly my inspiration. She's amazing. So, uh, yeah, do that. And I'll start doing a couple of these just to show you how I do it. Now what I'm doing here is just going and outlining. It's a bit of difficulty because it's hard to see <laughs> when it's clear. But thankfully, because it's raised a little bit, that helps. And having good lights helps too. So I'm just going ahead and doing that. And then I will go ahead and do it in my own time. Because as I said, this takes quite a few hours to do. It's not something you do in five minutes. So what I should have done was start it upside down because otherwise I'm going to get paint all over my fingers and I'm going to spread it all over the canvas, which is not a good thing. So 
So yeah, this is basically all I do. This part's easy because you're basically following a stencil. So when you're following a stencil, it's so much easier to, to know where you're going and what you're going to be doing. These ones are a little harder because you've got to try and make sure that you follow the pattern of the print as well as um, make it look look good. And sometimes, as you've seen by from my tiles, one of them looked really great and the other one not so much. Now, sometimes these little ones give me lines, so I'll have to go over it with a thicker one, with a thicker pen in the spots where, and I'll show you how I do that, because otherwise you get little funny squiggling lines then you don't want to do that. So you want it a full colour. So where there's no, nothing there, and you just want to make it totally solid, you just use a bigger mar marker pen. Okay, and as you can see, I'm, the flower is starting to take shape. I'll give you a close-up. So I've um, completed this particular flower. Do make a little bit of a mistake, you can clean it off. Not so much off the canvas, but on the on the gel bit you can. It's, you need a lot of patience <laughs> with this because it does take ages. The bigger the canvas, the longer it takes. And you don't want to be putting lines willy-nilly. As I said, the part where the stencil is is very easy because you're just following the stencil. And it looks a little bit rough now, rough around the edges a bit, but that's only because I'm just outlining the gel at the moment and I haven't filled in the whole lot. But as you can tell here, around this area here, it's starting to take shape and looking quite good. go back and clean it up with the uh, Poscas, the thicker ones, the thin one's good for detail but the thicker ones are better to fill up the spaces, gotta be careful you don't go onto the oops like I just did, I know she's not too bad, all right um, so that's basically all I do, an idea I'll bring that up close so you can have a look. Now with the other ones like those, as I said, don't know whether you can see it, but what I do is I pick out a little spot. I think, oh yeah, that would make a nice little flower. And basically I follow back part of the outline that's there and the rest I put of my own take on it because 
it's not all accurately like a flower. It, it is the fluid part of it, so it does its own thing. So if I want to create a flower and make it look like a flower, I have to put my own spin on it. And that's basically what I'm doing there. I don't know whether you can see that. Can you see that? Probably a little bit far away. I'll have to bring it up closer. But that's basically what I'm doing here, just outlining the flower. As best I can it's not perfect so as I said I've got to put my own take on it and that's fine perfect it's not 100 percent perfect that one's better than that one but i've tried to follow the lines as much as i can and then what i'll do is i go around and do the same thing with that i darken in between bits that i sometimes the pen runs out and i thicken up the lines a little bit to give it that kind of tiled effect or stenciled effect. This is the freehand bit. Now one thing I noticed with the tiles, and it's probably the same with this, the longer you leave the canvas to dry before you actually stencil it, the better it is. Often stencil or freehand draw on canvases that I've used uh, that I that I painted probably a year ago. These ones are still a little bit fresh and sometimes the Posca marker when you're working on it picks up the paint underneath because it's still quite fresh even though it's been a week or or two since you've painted it's probably not long enough for it uh, to be fully dry and this one in particular was only done last week so even though the painting looks like it's dry and you can touch it when you go to Posca pen on it, sometimes it still picks up the paint from underneath. So the best thing is, although I haven't done it with this case, in this case, the best thing is to make sure that the canvas is fully dry. So maybe give it a few months before you actually embellish it with Posca pens. If you're embellishing it with paint, it's different. But if you Posca pens are paint, but they're pens, so the pen the nibs tend to scrape up the paint underneath so yeah keep that in mind just make sure that they're really fully dry before you go ahead and posca them posca them <laughs> new new term so that uh you're not picking up the paint underneath and yeah anyway so that's all i do just so you can see basically what i'm doing here is outlining that and thickening the lines so that it gives it that stenciled look like so and sometimes when you start off there might be a few little glitches like in there there's a, there's a little mark but you can fix them up as you go And you've got to do it really slowly because otherwise you do stuff them up. It's easier to stuff up. And as I said, on the canvas, it's harder to wipe it off. But on the uh, gel, if you accidentally make a mistake and it goes on top of the gel, you can actually wipe it away quickly as long as you do it quick. 
Uh, yeah, so that's it basically. Oops, see how yeah, this one's pulling up the paint underneath. So I've got to be really gentle when I'm drawing it. And the good thing with this is you can see how I've given it a bit of a shape there, whereas that one's square and I don't like that square look, so I'm just going to give it a bit of a shape to give it a bit of a ripple effect like some of the flowers have. pretty much it so like I said I'm not going to show you the whole lot on the screen I'm just giving you a basic idea of how I do it and I'll come back to it when I'm done and show you I may show you some progress shots as I go and that's what I'll do I'll go finish I want to do the stencil first because that'll tell me where I can and can't put the flowers uh, in the other spaces and if these two were easy because they're on the corner but there's some in there that I can put in but I've got to make sure that I don't go in the areas where the stencil is so I will do that uh, and then come back and show you some more as I progress through it I'll be back okay here's a close-up of what I was doing still a little bit rough but it's just the beginning of it. So I'll go through and tidy it up once I've outlined it all. And that's those ones that I was doing, the hand, freehand ones. Another freehand one. You can see there's lots in there, but I've got to, you can see the raised bit there that I've got to outline first. And then I'll come back and do the freehand ones. There's probably one there that I could use. Another one there. Probably that nice big one there, we'll see. See how it looks. Yeah, so that's just the outline at the moment. And it's a little bit rough, as you can see. I'll go over it properly once it's completed. And see how it's picking up you can pick up the colors from underneath it looks really really pretty all right cool here's the next stage not quite finished as you can see I'm still outlining the flowers and I've only done one of the stencils so I'm going back now to complete the other stencil so I can work out where the rest of the flowers are going to go but that's as far as I've got so far okay now this is the finished product as far as the outline is concerned I finished outlining that flower up there I've added a few little funny little flowers in there as well just to fill it up a little bit because I don't want too much black I want to portray that color underneath I want it to come come up so yeah, so now I am going to start the background. I'll work around like I did in the flower there, as I showed you. I will fill in the black in between the spaces and thicken up those flower lines like I did there and tidy it all up. And then I will show you the finished product. Now, as I said, it takes quite a while, so I'm not going to do it all on camera. Um, I'm doing showing you bits and pieces as I go. And then at the end, I'll show you the final product. Uh, this is it. I've completed the artwork and this is what it looks like now I'll try and get a top view that's the finished product took quite a few hours to do but I'm kind of happy with it there's a few little uh, things that I could have done differently but pretty much I'm happy with it really so I'll give you a close-up so see how the 
the paint from underneath has come through and it looks really cool. Uh, and that's just shine there that's uh, looking a bit like it's cracked, but it's not. <laughs> it's actually just, if I come up close so you can see, it's just the shine coming through. And that's basically it. There's paint coming through there as well, those little red ones. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, there are some bits that I would uh, do differently next time, but I'm actually quite happy with that uh, compared to what it looked like in the beginning. I'm pretty happy. So that's it. If you liked what you saw, please comment, share, subscribe, and hit that uh, notification bell so you will be notified when the next video is uploaded. Until next time, take care. Bye.